Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Please stand as you are able. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone this morning on this uh, Christ the King Sunday, also a New Year's Eve for the church, if you will. Our service begins on page three of your bulletin or page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the one holy and living God, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your love. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven, away, driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord, and then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up David, a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 46. We will read this responsibly. 
God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved. Though its waters rage and foam. The Lord of hosts is with us. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. The Lord of hosts is with us. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. Be still then and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. It can be found on page 7 of the bulletin. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, with joyful giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of commendation? And, when, and we indeed have been condemned just, justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From our collect this morning, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under your most gracious rule. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today is uh, Christ the King Sunday, or as some people are now calling it, the reign of Christ, that last Sunday of the church year. So that's kind of a a New Year's Eve type gathering, if you will, without uh, a lot of the alcohol, (laughs) as we uh, celebrate, at least in the United States. But it's Christ the King Sunday, and it's a Sunday in a church where we, we lift up Christ as Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And part of the challenge is most of us don't know really what it means to live under a king. We're good old Americans. We have democracy. We have presidents, not kings. We have elected people, not appointed people. And I find it interesting as you look at the different readings of the three years of the church year. Year A, we're in year C, just so you know, so that's um, of the three. Year A we hear the gospel of the day for that year is the parable, uh, a parable of the separating the sheep from the goats. So we hear Christ as that shepherd. For year B, last year we heard the dialogue with Pontius Pilate right before Jesus' death. And he says, are you the king of the Jews? And today, we of course hear of the crucifixion of Jesus. As we're ready to celebrate Jesus' birth and we're getting ready and anxious on all kinds of Christmas things and Thanksgiving just a few days away, we are reminded of the way our King died. Reminded that our King is a King of love, a King of forgiveness, a King of welcome. And we hear that throughout the gospel story. We hear that as Jesus is on the cross and his words are, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. Can you imagine a king being crucified and then giving forgiveness? I mean, come on, if we were to write this story, Jesus might get on the cross, but what even better, right before they drive those nails into his hand, Jesus would raise up and the rebellion would start. And everyone would fight for his freedom. Everyone would fight 
for him. But this is a different kingdom. This is not our kingdom. It's not the way we might script it. Today we hear of a kingdom of love, of forgiveness, and of welcome. A king who would give his life for the world. We hear of a king that forgives those who are killing him. We hear of a king that brings one of the least of these along with him. As we hear of this criminal on the side being hung with him as well, being in pain with him as well, saying, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We don't know what this criminal has done. But we know Jesus' words Truly, I share with you, you will be in paradise with me today. That's the king that we celebrate this day. That's the king we follow. A king that is filled with love, shares that love out into the world. The hard part is if we are to follow a king like that, we have to love. We have to forgive. We have to welcome. And that's probably some of the hardest things that we have to do. If we are truly followers of this king, our life is rough. Our life goes against maybe even that inner feeling. It definitely goes against the world and how we want to respond we want to respond with, with anger. We want to respond with justification, not with love. I wrote this sermon or put my notes together about, what, four hours ago, three hours ago now. Finished it up, and I'm like, ah, oh, all right. Well done, good and faithful servant. And I opened up my phone... <laughs> Sometimes that goes through my head. <laughs> if, if no one else is going to say it, I'm going to say it. <laughs> but then I open up my phone and I am reminded how hard this is. Because I, I looked at the news. And I saw the fact that there was a shooting 35 miles from this spot in Colorado Springs early this morning last night. Five people killed in a gay bar. Eighteen people injured. We don't know the story yet, but we can imagine the story. We can imagine the terror of someone who wanted to reach out in anger, not in love. And we're to follow a king that is loving, liberating, and life-giving it's hard work, isn't it? But how, and even more so now today, we have got to reach out in love. We've got to welcome the people in. And yes, we have to forgive as well. That's the hard part for me. Because it is all there together in our gospel today. A loving God, a forgiving God, a welcoming God. That's the King of kings, that's the Lord of lords, and that's the life we are called to live. We have got to let people know that there is another way. We have got to let people know that they are loved, they are welcomed. And we've got to work on our forgiveness in so, so many ways. King of kings. Lord of lords. We have a very clear picture of what our king is about. The question is, are we ready to follow that king? Are we ready to be loving, liberating, and life-giving to all people? Are we ready to share God's love, God's forgiveness, and God's welcome? to all people.
Today we celebrate the King of Kings. But today we are also called to live like followers of the King of Kings. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 9 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join with me in the prayers of the people. You may stand, sit, or kneel as you are comfortable. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Bishop Kim, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation.
Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Greg, Gina, Danny, Doris, Linda and Allie, Lydia, Charlie, Susan, Aaron, Peggy, Patty, Rick H., John and Barbara, Laura, Sharon, Kendra, Kristen, Katrina, Jim, Shelley, Wesley, Stephanie, Debbie, John, Kim, Samantha, Linda, Guile, Baby Brindley Rose, the Almeral family, Daryl, Richard, Steve, Lynn, Marby, Georgie, Jen, Sage, Michael, Jack and family, our military families, law enforcement, and first responders, our homebound parishioners, and those in nursing facilities, all who are sick, and the healthcare workers who care for them. We pray for moisture in this time of drought in Colorado and the West. We also pray for the victims, family, and friends. Of those killed and injured in the shooting at the Club Q nightclub in Colorado Springs early this morning. And we pray for the LGBTQ community as we all mourn together. And today, let us pray together for our country. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray for understanding. And we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, violence, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. Hear us, Lord. We thank you for all the blessings of this life. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Julia Plotke, Michael Ann McEtron, Colleen Norwine, and Rita Krupp. And today, we celebrate the arrival of Asha Marie Dadlani, granddaughter of Kim and Julie. Dadlani, as well as those celebrating anniversaries, Rob and Mary Brooks, and Jim and Maria Denton. Today's altar flowers have been given by Rob and Mary Brooks in honor of their 36th wedding anniversary. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise We pray for Fred Mamak, Ted Petrazak, 
Danny Schivoni and Bill Weaver, and those who died in the Colorado Springs shooting early this morning, and all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone, both in the sanctuary and on Zoom. God's peace. God's peace, sir. Please be seated. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone today. We do uh, welcome our visitors and newcomers. I uh, invite you to sign the guest book if you're here in the sanctuary. And on Zoom, you can uh, uh, sign in uh, via the chat and let us know who you are. A few items of life in the parish. Um, we continue with our adult education today. We're wrapping up the Cup of Salvation series. So one more uh, round on that on the Psalms, a deep dive into the Psalms. So join us at 9.15 over in the, uh, uh, the chapel. Next week, we'll take off um, a week of, due to Thanksgiving, and we have our lessons and carols that day and everything. And then we'll start up an Advent um, study starting in December, and that'll be looking at uh, some of the differences between Matthew and Luke's um, uh, Gospels when it comes to the birth narrative. So that should be interesting. Uh, with this week being Thanksgiving, we do have uh, the office will be closed uh, Wednesday and fr Thursday and Friday and all that. So if you have any emergencies or anything, I will be around. So do uh, give me a call or text me, drop me an email or so. Um, also, uh, we have uh, next Sunday is Lessons and Carols. At this service, it'll be our normal service with a sermon for First Advent and everything. And then at the 1030 service, the choir will be having Lessons and Carols. So we'll have, in place of the sermon, Lessons and Carols throughout the beginning part of the service and then Eucharist as well. So join us on any of those that you would like for that. 
Um, also, we are getting the uh, Advent devotional booklets will be out. Those will be both, uh, the PDF files will be out this week, and then next week we'll have the printed files as well and everything. So thank you for all those who um, uh, uh, wrote for, the, for those. That is, um, I've read through a lot of them, and uh, looking forward to going day by day through those as well. Uh, Christmas pageant's coming up. It's that time of the year. So uh, please, if you have any children, youth that are interested in the pageant, see uh, Cindy or um, uh, Kimberly Hubs and all that. Kimberly's out this week, but we'll be back next week. So, um, and there's all kinds of information in there as well. Ne- uh, the, we have a youth group uh, wrapping event on, um, where is that? I didn't underline the date. December the 4th. So uh, not next Sunday, but the Sunday. So if you've got some gifts and want them to be professionally wrapped, and they actually have a really good system of making sure that the, re- the presents you receive are the presents you turned in. That was always my, my worry. Is what happens when they open the present? I'm like, well, that's not what I thought it was going to be. But they have a very good system for that. So trust them. Trust the process, Father Brian, is what I was told. <laughs> so, and again, all kinds of other things going on. Um, if, you, if you know of anyone who is homebound or needs communion brought to them, we have a great uh, uh, guild of Eucharistic ministers that are ready to serve there. So you can see Barbara Nickel on that one. And also we are expanding the columbarium. Many, uh, some of you might know we, we have a columbarium in the back of the um, chapel in the North X area. All but one of those niches have been reserved or are being used. And so we've been looking, the columbarium committee has been looking at ways to expand that. And we now will have, um, we've got it on order, another 20 niches and all that. So if you've been wondering about um, having your uh, remains here at the church and all that, um, there's information in there and you can reserve those and everything. And then we are also in the future hoping to have one here in the sanctuary as well, but still feel like there's room for some in the, in the chapel also. So if you're looking at any of that, uh, uh, please see any of the members that are on the columbarium committee and that's down at the bottom of that uh, announcement. All right. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
please stand as you are able. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy known have we given thee. Thank you, Lord. And now we continue with Eucharistic Prayer 2, found on page 13 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life, and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine Again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. We offer you to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, Bring us with Fred, Ted, Danny, and all your saints from every tribe, language, people, and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you are able. We now continue on page 20 of your bulletin. Now that we have been fed with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and we are sent out into the world to serve him whom we celebrate, we pray together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.